What is up, Earth's mightiest subscribers? It's Ernie, Blurred Without Fear. Welcome back to the channel. All right, today's video, we are going to be talking about X-Men number 17 by Jonathan Hickman and Brett Booth. And in this video, we are going to learn the Shi'ar Empire has come under fire by a rebellion that has now seen the Empress, Zandra Naramani, who some of you may remember as being the daughter of Charles Xavier and Empress Lalandra. She has gone missing and the X-Men have to travel to Shi'ar space to save her. And we're also going to learn how this little incident is going to affect the X-Men character Storm going forward. We're going to talk about all that and more right now, but first, let's hit that intro. Word wise, grass only greener when it's fertilized. Gave them truth in these songs, they prefer the lies. That's any beautiful adrift than her purple lies. You can't see me, you see me. Wondering how I reach more evolutions than Evie and make it look easy. Okay, so this issue is really awesome because once again, not only are we getting more Jonathan Hickman writing, but we are also getting the return of Brett Booth, whose pencils, I think, are amazing here, especially because throughout this comic, we are going to be seeing Cyclops and Marvel Girl in their classic Inferno era costumes, which don't get me wrong. I really didn't care about you know, whether or not Marvel Girl, Jean Grey, whatever she wants to go by this week. I didn't care whether or not she wore the classic green dress. I didn't care about that. And I really thought that, you know, Cyclops' costume has been perfectly fine, you know, for the last good while. But seeing them in these classic Inferno costumes really did this old Blurred's heart some good. That said, there is unrest in the Shi'ar Empire. Right now, things are going from sugar to shit because, for one, the economy of the Shi'ar Empire is taking a hit, and I believe there are a lot of factors that are involved in this. You could even make a play for saying that Null's arrival and his sweeping through the Marvel Cosmic Universe probably did this no favors, but this has actually been brewing for a long time because of the change in leadership going from Empress Lalandra to Xandra and by proxy to Gladiator who acts as Praetor and he is not necessarily the most diplomatic type and he has been technically leading the Shi'ar Empire in these dark times and what typically happens when you have someone who rules with an iron fist during hard times you wind up with a rebellion potentially brewing in your midst, and that's exactly what happens. And of course, Deathbird, who is the aunt of Xandra, she has been tasked, as we saw back in Dawn of X's opening New Mutants comics, we've seen that she is acting as an advisor to Xandra to help her better understand how to rule the Shi'ar Empire in these desperate times. And I know what some are probably thinking, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, isn't Deathbird like a former X-Men villain? But yeah. It gets complicated. Just like how mutant villains being on Krakoa is complicated, so too is Deathbird's relationship with not just the X-Men, but the rest of the Shi'ar Empire. Deathbird has, for all intents and purposes, turned over a new leaf. She's not exactly the same person that we probably remember her from back in the 80s and 90s. And right now, with her niece having turned up missing, they need help. And who else is she going to call? She calls in the X-Men and they come running. And it's pretty awesome because it's one of those situations where we're kind of getting to see some classic X-Men action. And I'm here for it. But one of the things I thought was even more hilarious about this is the fact that when they show up, it's kind of one of those moments where the X-Men get to lay their dick on the table. Because at this moment, when they show up, the rest of the Shi'ar Empire's court are like, oh, we don't really need you guys. We've already done all the investigating. What more are you going to add to it? And more importantly, Shi'ar Empire character Oracle, who is a telepath and a powerful one in her own right, she thinks that there's no point in Jean telepathically scanning everyone in the room to see who is the culprit because someone in this room had something to do with Xandra's disappearance because each of the people in this room were on deck the day she disappeared. And though Oracle doesn't think that she's going to find anything useful. The thing that separates Jean from other telepaths is she's not looking for someone who is thinking about what has happened. She's looking for someone who's not thinking about it. She even says it herself. In situations like these, I've often found it effective to not look for what someone is thinking, but focus in on an absence 
of certain thoughts entirely to see the mask for what it is. And Jean has actually been showing this little trick of hers off a lot lately, especially in the pages of X-Force. And she figures out who the sus one is and reports the imposter on site. And it turns out that the person in question is a Stygian. There's a Stygian rebellion that is going on, and once Deathbird realizes this person's true identity, everything becomes clear to her. She immediately knows where Xandra is, and she is with a character by the name of Ur, who I don't believe we've ever met before, but for some reason, I get the sneaking suspicion that we have seen him at some point. Point of the matter is, is that the Stygians have suffered. They have basically been working a mining colony since they fell under the rule of the Shi'ar Empire, and the the Shi'ar Empire promised them a great many things. The Shi'ar promised them money, wealth, equality, and just overall, the pursuit of happiness. And, huh, it just didn't work out. They promised things that they honestly couldn't really deliver. And what would happen next is the Stygians would fall under an economic collapse. Their people would struggle and ultimately wind up facing starvation and having to fight for their own survival, scraping just to get by. This is some really heavy political commentary because I mean, this is stuff that's actually happened in the real world in regards of actual real world governments making promises to people that they can't keep and those people suffering for it later in the long run while the government itself gets away scot-free. That said, Ur plans on making Empress Xandra pay for her Bodie Fingers crimes, even though Xandra isn't actually responsible for the plight that the Stygians have faced. She is a young Empress. She really hasn't even been in charge for that long, relatively speaking. This is a character who technically didn't make their first appearance until the Mr. and Mrs. X series in 2018, so they really haven't been in charge of anything for all that long and she even points out that I'm a child. I haven't been at this for a long time and you're not giving me a chance to actually help you in any kind of meaningful way. And though they can have this philosophical debate back and forth about who is right and who is wrong, who's the monster and who created who, at the end of it all, the X-Men alongside Cannonball's wife and the super guardian to the Shi'ar Empire and its throne, Smasher, pull up on the scene and they start wrecking shop. Now, of course, we gotta put a little respect on Ur's name because he is no slouch. That hammer that he wields is very much like a Kree accuser's hammer, but on steroids. Erd looks like someone who is not to be trifled with. He seems to be quite powerful, and he does prove it by splitting Cyclops' wig with it and actually putting the X-Men on the back foot. But this is where I feel like Storm steps up to the plate and proves why she is one of the most powerful and most popular characters in the the history of X-Men anything because she pulls up and immediately starts putting paws on Ur. Now granted it does also help that Smasher calls in her fellow Guardians to help rein in Ur and his rebellion. Of course that definitely helps and there's even some comedic shenanigans going on there too in regards to Sunspot and Cannonball but that's neither here nor there. The real meat of the matter is that ultimately when it comes down to it, while the Guardians are tearing down Ur's rebellion, unit by unit, Ur is going to take this opportunity to try to assassinate Xandra, but he's going to be unsuccessful because Storm pulls up and solos this guy, blocking his hammer with one electrified paw and flash frying him. This is probably one of Storm's most powerful moments I think we've seen in quite some time, and I want to just put some respect on this because over the last man, maybe the last year or so, I constantly hear people complain about Storm not getting enough to do, not doing anything important. And man, I don't know. I guess maybe it's because I read all of these Dawn of X, Reign of X, all these Hickman era X-Men comics. Maybe that's why I have a different opinion on the matter. But I have seen more than Storm's fair share of baller ass, gangster ass moments. And this is one of them. Her taking a shot that laid Cyclops on his ass. She takes that hammer and basically kills catches it in the palm of her hand and flash fries this dude? No, dude, uh-uh. Storm has been getting her respect. She has been getting her propers. It may not be the way you want it, but I'm telling you, Storm has been getting her respect for the last 10 years. I would even say even uh, further back than that. 
But that's neither here nor there. They're able to save Xandra. They're able to get her back safe and sound. And of course, Cyclops is probably the only one who is the worst for it. But in the end, yes, Xandra is back. And she has realized that she has learned a valuable lesson. And something that Deathbird has helped her understand as well is that in winter, an iron hand is never a good idea. Not only that, but Xandra says that she is going to actually punish Ur. She has to. The other Stygians, they are going to be allowed to go free and that they will will be allowed to prosper, but Ur is going to be punished, but not in the way that I think a lot of people are going to expect. Ur was a zealot. He is a madman, and the one thing on Earth that he hates more than anything else is politicians, and that's exactly what he's about to become. Ur is about to become the representative for Stygia to the Shi'ar Empire, something that will honestly probably help his people, but will probably make him incredibly miserable. And as for Storm, Storm being the sole savior of Xandra, she is now being offered a boon. Now, we don't know what this boon is going to be, and we don't really know when or if Storm is ever going to call this marker in anytime soon, but we do have to take notice of the fact that Storm has been featured on the front and center portion of the Reign of X reveal poster, and, and she's holding that mysterious artifact that was found in Al Ewing's Sword Number 1. Now, whether or not that is going to have any ties to this, whether or not there's going to be any connection there, who who knows, but something tells me that marker is going to come in handy very soon. And we do also have to keep in mind while she's doing all this also on the front lines, trying to help T'Challa beat back the insurrection that is going on right now at the hands of Killmonger and his Unjadaka Simbi. So if anyone could help quell the flames of war that are going on there, the Shi'ar Empire would definitely help considering that Killmonger now has access to the intergalactic empire Wakanda's technology and their armadas. So maybe this is going to be how that's going to tie in because we got to remember that the Black Panther Coats run has been pushed back even though it's actually dated to end in three more issues. We're not going to see those issues until I believe April of this year. So who knows? Maybe that could be a portion of it. Maybe this might be some way to kind of curry back some favor in the eyes of Wakanda considering what all happened during Ten of Swords when she took the Skybreaker from Wakanda. But that said, yeah, this issue is fantastic. And of course, once again, I do want to remind you guys that the X men election is still going on you still have until february 2nd 1159 p.m i might add to get your votes in i will have the link where you can vote the x-man that you want to join the team because uh, x-men are now going to be a for the people by the people team and marvel though they have chosen the people they want to be on the team overall they are allowing the readership to pick one character out of the ones that are listed here and i did a video yesterday that i dropped making a case for the character tempo i highly recommend you go check out that video video because honestly in my opinion I think she's a character that actually deserves a spot on the team considering every other character on this list has been an X-Man at some point in time and is already featured in anywhere from 200 to over 500 comics minimum. Tempo has barely been in 30. But that said if you enjoyed this video Hulk smash that like button and share it with all your friends so they can know how you leveled up your comic book big brain in regards to Jonathan Hickman's X-Men series and Reign of X. Keep it plus ultra and sound off in the comments.